What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, I'm Andy the Middle Age Gamer and this is the APFG MPXK Gas Blowback SMG slash PDW and this is a good one. So grab a drink, take a seat and strap in. Let's see what this is. Now, before we do, we've got to ask ourselves two questions. What is APFG and what does it stand for? Well, the second one is easy. It stands for a passion for gun. Weird name for a company, right? Uh, so who are they? Well, it turns out in the last month of review process that I put into this, I can tell you now, there is no physical place in Taiwan that's got an address with APFG as its name or a passion for gun as its title. So it was really difficult. So I've had to pull in from suppliers and people that I know in the industry. And at this point, I can tell you now, this is my belief, disclaimer alert, put it all in, in things. This is my research that I've done. You do yours, you might come to a different conclusion. That's life. But this is generally what I believe is to be the fact. APFG is a subsidiary company of VFC. Now, why would you do that? Especially if you're doing SIG and you know VFC have the license for SIG. Well, it's quite simple. SIG Sauer do license the guns to VFC, but it has to be retailed under the SIG Proforce because SIG Proforce is a subsidiary of SIG Sauer USA. Bit complicated, right? They've got a subsidiary that has no boundary, no home, no nothing to define where it is other than the SIG Sauer USA address. But they don't make the guns over there. They don't manufacture them. They don't assemble them. They don't package them. It's all done in Taiwan at VFC's, I would say, main warehouses. So, yeah, if I was VFC, I'd feel a little bit conflicted, considering that if they want to do a new gun, they have to get approval. It's got to go through the line, and then they've got to pay licensing fees and everything else, and then retail it under a brand that's not their own, or they have no control over. So... That's basically their idea. They set up a subsidiary company. It allows them to produce guns that they love. And they just have to be markless. Now, it's not the first rodeo for them. They did it with the Mark 18. My Mark II has no cult markings on it because that's owned by Cybergun. And rather than paying extortionate million-dollar fees to Cybergun for something that might not give you a return, or if it does, you're having to overcharge people to recover the cost, it's too much of a burden. So they gave you a blank receiver. Even Daniel Defense was decent enough to give them a, a cheaper license so that they could have it, the RIS-2 handguard on it, with all its markings. And so that's why my Mark 18 is literally called an AR-15 RIS-2 as a technical term. But, you know, now they were in bed with cult. We're getting cult stuff and all that sort of thing. But it took them the Mark 18 version 2 to do this. And I believe the Gen 3 is the same, the V3. Uh, or the whatever you want to call it, the brand new one that's just been launched is exactly the same. It's got a blank receiver, no cult markings, because, again, it's all about licensing. And they did it with the 1911 in 2019, where they released a VFC unlicensed 1911, literally called that. Uh, it was £120, and now you can buy the exact same gun with the Kimber markings on it for 160 because they acquired the license after the success of the pistol. And it looks like this is that way. They basically make an unmarked product that you know what it is and you can make your own, which I like that, giving me the choice. I, I don't mind it because, to be honest, I'm not running around the battlefield looking for if it's got the MPX markings on there or Six Hour logo. That's just ridiculous. You're running around trying to fight for your life, not checking your guns out. You get me? So, yeah, give me better internals. Give me better, pro, how would I say, operation of the gun. And that's what I'm in for. So that's who APFG are, a subsidiary of VFC. And to be honest, good on them. And currently the next one is the uh, MCX Rattler, I believe, in 300 Blackout. It runs off the um, VFC magazine, so any of their AR-15 mags will power it. You even get the stock that's on this with it, and it's not a cheap stock. Um, and you get a suppressor that's not a tracer unit, but it will add FPS to your gun. But that's coming in the pipeline. I've got one on back order. We'll have to wait and see at some point this year and see how that one is. All I can tell you is this MPX is amazing. So, like I say, now that we're all sat down, got a drink, let's go over this gun. 
Okay, so for those of you who saw my first video, you know that the gun comes with basically in its pistol form, where you don't get a stock or any of the extras. It does come with an A2 birdcage, and that's about it, and one magazine. And obviously you get your hop adjustment Allen key and your um, BB speed loader. Now, this gun is really, really good um, in quality. I was really blown away with it over this last month of firing through. I think I've gone just over 3,000 rounds now through it. And unlike other YouTubers, you'll be able to see that when we take it down. So let's bring it slightly up more closer to the actual camera and we'll go over the thing. Start with the magazine. So if I hit the button and drop the mag, you can leave that there. Okay, so you get an aluminum magazine. Yes, the MPX comes with polymer. And believe it or not, this cover piece here, that's where your BBs are inside and that is polymer. But in order for VSC to give you a really good reservoir of gas to cycle the weapon and give you a good efficiency. They went with the aluminum on the outside, giving you just more volume inside. Because if you had to put this as well as a plastic shell, it was too much. Or shrink this down, it'd give you less. So yeah, it, the feel of the magazine is really lightweight. It's actually lighter than the MP5 magazines. It's lighter than the AR-15 magazines. It's just really light. And yet it's much bigger. You have your polymer butt plate here they do sell extension pieces for this so you can pop this one off take the base cap out and then extend it and have even more reservoir if you wish but with a 90 bb capacity um on one charge of gas that's really good capacity out of the out of this now you get your vsc field valve here at the top and the knocker valve there obviously you get your o-rings now this here at the back if I can get it to focus, that there is your bolt stop. So that pops up, as you can see here at the front, when that BB follower hits the top, that will pop up and basically stop the bolt on the last round, well, after the last round's fire, I should say, which is really good. And it's a really good build. Now, let's take a look at the gun itself. So, like I say, here at the rear, as you can see, is a Picatinny rail, okay? Made famous by Sig Sauer, and several other companies beforehand, but Sig Sauer is the one that we usually see. You can fit any stock on there. Like I say, this is a folding stock that will lock in one position, or you can, like I say, switch it around, lift up. It's nice and stiff, stays rigid, and locks in the rear. So that's awesome. Here at the bottom, as you can see, you have your QD mount, so you can easily just put one in and click and have a rear QD for your single point sling, which is how I actually set it up. Even though I have the front, I still set it up that way, which is awesome. Now, from there, you have your fire selector, which is full size on the left and ambi on the right. So you have another one here, but it's slightly compact. I'll show it you as we flip the gun around. You get your six hour, how would I say, MCX, MPX grip, minus the Sig Sauer branding here that would normally be embossed into it, which is fine. It does come with its compartment at the bottom. You get your single stage mill oil spec trigger and your molded in winter trigger guard. Let's call it that way, which is well big enough for you and your gloved hands or your armor hands for airsoft to actually work. You know, it's really comfortable. You get your ambidextrous bolt stop release with a short throw release and your extended paddle here to lock the bolt to the rear. So you can pull that out, lock it to the rear, and lock that back. You have your very short throw magazine release, easy enough so that you can grab it a la MP40, stroke Sten, and just do it with your left mm -hmm. hand. And because it's ambi, you can just do it with your trigger finger on your right like an AR, which is really cool. They've even re replicated the extractor into that so that's great okay now if we go up here to the top you do have a full length picatinny rail barring the last two slots here as you can see where the handguard joins up this here all the way down the side is your handguard this is actually part of the receiver so the picatinny rail goes all the way up to about there and then there's two slots on the handguard itself now here you can see um, basically if I drop the bolt um, so here at the back you can see here there are two bolts going through there are your locking surfaces for 
charging handle. As you can see, they lock onto the steel there, so it doesn't weigh your receiver. Again, really good for quality control and for longevity. Now the T-handle, as you can see, is ambidextrous and really works well, but it is proprietary to the MPX stroke MCX. So if you have any of those, the T-handle will work, but a normal AR, no. That's SIG's decision, it's the same in the real steel. So if we flip the gun around now, without breaking anything, as you can see, you've got your shorter throw here, you know, for your fire selector, which is nice and positive. It's tactile, it locks. Even with the long throw though, the long side here, you don't have it in the way. It doesn't dig into your finger. You don't accidentally nudge it into that, the halfway stage, which is really good. There's your standard mag release. And if I lock the bolt open, to the rip you can see you have your little paddle release here for your bolt okay and i love the dust cover it's really nice and i do love that ting sound where with the steel hammer hitting a steel firing pin it's really nice as you can see but that's basically all she wrote for the controls and all that the receiver uh, upper and lower is milled aluminum and milled very well i'll give them that it's a really good there's no play whatsoever and like i say at the front it's a 14 millimeter counterclockwise barrel so you can easily take the muzzle off and I, i've done put a suppressor to make it look kind of cool and i added the compact rifle surefire clone on the side so really good so this is a really good i uh, how to say build and it has how to say my take on it obviously yours might differ it's entirely up to you but as you can see, this is my build. I love it. It's awesome. So let's take it outside before we bring it back in and we can split it open and show you the insides. Okay, so now we're out of the chronograph. It's a bit of a rainy day today, but let's see what she's like. I'm going to be using 0.25 gram BBs and green gas. So, yeah, what was that on average? Let's have a look. Average of 284.9, and that's not bad. Okay, so now that we've done the FPS results, let's have a look at how accurate she is. I'm going to step it back to 10 meters, and let's see what she's like for CQB distance. Wow, that's all I'm gonna say with that is wow. Okay, so now that we've done the chronograph test, as you can see, it's it's really good and it shoots awesome. It loves the two fives on this, it hates twos, it does tend to overhop them. Um, but other than that, it's awesome. So let's see if we can crack this thing open on camera. It's always harder to do in, in camera, but let's see what we can do. So if I push that through, we should be able to pop the rear pin now. At first, that's really, really tight, and you will need a punch, just a simple little um, pin or a tool to pop it through. You do have to squeeze the upper and lower together, because as you can see, if I lift it, if I do it there, look, you can see, get the light for you, it automatically lifts up, because in here is an accu wedge To hold the upper and lower completely tight, it's really good quality. Now, we crack this gun completely open. As you can see, let's... Uh, bring her in and you can now see the internals you get your accurate wedge here and as you can see wear and tear will happen on the paint finish but there's no actual grease scratches or metal damage or anything like that it's just normal it's also a good idea at this point to point out if you ever look at people reviewing guns and the guns look perfect they're lying okay and um, they have no clue whether it works or not now you've got your full 
your steel takedown, your steel um, fire, how to say, sear for your full auto sear, should I say, and your fire selector bar that goes right across is full steel as well. Okay, so yes, as you can see, it's fully working. And if we put it in to set, we can switch it to safe, semi and full auto. Oh, it does sound good. Now, all your controls in there is full steel as well. So that is awesome. If I get the light off for you, you can see a little bit better. Okay. All your springs, sears, pins, everything in there is steel. The trigger itself is aluminum, but everything else is steel. Now, this does come with the version 3 or Gen 3 VFC internals. Again, all of the bits are product marked. So as you can see, you get your V3 firing pin, which is awesome. You hit on that and it pushes it out quite nicely. You've got your steel bolt stop release. As you can see, the slight bit of wear now on that starting to form, as it always will do. Your actual controls here are steel for your mag release and your ambi bolt stop there, which drops the level from the other side. And it's really good. Now, if we take out the insides to do that, we pull that down. Now here at the back, you can see here you get a polymer spacer or buffer and we pull on the charging handle to the rear we can now pull out the bolt carrier and the charging handle will drop free as well now we can move that aside and out of the way okay so here is your bolt carrier and this is really decent they've authentically replicated the real steel one and it feels heavy and it comes with their M4 slash 416 nozzle inside. It's screwed in through here and secured at the rear, but that is easily put in. I do love the way that they've joined it. You have an Allen key in here to separate the upper and lower if you wish to do so. It's a lot more simpler, you know, and this does have an end pass. So with the low FPS that you're getting right now, because you only have a 90 millimeter in a barrel in there, it's a case of you're not gonna have much volume of gas going down there no matter what because it's such a short barrel and that's why you get some wild results with the original setup but you can tune it with your impasse here to get a steady rate of fire and so on but as you can see you see the wear and tear on my bolt this is not a scratch it's just actual paint where it makes contact with the receiver inside the upper receiver as it slides backwards and forwards and like i say the recoil on this is quite nice it does work i've seen some people say oh no you need to have and this is a dual recall you got one set of springs here and second here for the absorption of it as it goes home it's really cool um but some people are saying oh no you need to do this or you need to do that and no you don't you, you know you don't have to do anything you just have to put rounds through it okay now your t-handle like i say is a special one it looks similar to an ar-15 but it's not and that's basically all she wrote um, when it comes to it. You know, there, there really isn't much more to it um, with the internals. You know, reassembly is quite simple. Um, it literally really is. So all we need to do is put your charging handle in and click it. Just let it fall a little bit, not all the way. Grab our bolt carrier group, which is all captive, which is awesome. Oop, we're a little bit out of focus there. Slide it in and just drop it down, lock that forward, and it'll lock in there. Way! Launch my spacer somewhere, but hey, grab your spacer, drop that in the rear, and then you just slightly put it down slowly, let everything settle in, and then squeeze together, and you should be able to push through. And once you've done that, we'll function test it. Grab a magazine, Whoop. smack me camera, usual stuff, hold the bolt down, and Gas is running out, but that's fine. Okay, and I love that drop. Oh, quite nice. So yeah, and that's basically all she wrote when it comes down to it. Um, she's just an absolutely phenomenal piece of kit. So if we back the camera up a little bit, let's see about putting this back in. Frame for you. Okay, so as you can see, I mean, she is awesome, right? It is absolutely amazing. And I would say, without a shadow of a doubt, 
it's really a awesome little SMG. Now, I was asked by a few other people that I know, is it better than the MP5K? And I'm going to say it's either equal. If not a little bit better, it's about equal in every way to it. I think this gets me more because it's modern controls. It's unique in itself, but it's all modernized and it's easy to accessorize and get set up and go. The MP5K requires a lot of money on different handguards and setup and getting everything ready to go just to be able to put lights and lasers. And there's a lot of things that you need. You can't just stick an optic on there. You have to go and buy a claw mount, for instance, and all this sort of stuff. And like I say, yes, the MP5 shoots a little bit hotter. I mean, to be honest, the MP5 shoots hotter but doesn't have an M pass. This shoots low but has an impasse. So if I want to make this like the John Wick um, or the Terran Tactical, they sell the kit, you can get the carbon fiber 16 inch handguard, the barrel, you get all that together in one big kit, you just add that to it, it takes seconds to do. Um, yeah, and away you go. You know, it, it's easy to do. It's down to the user at the end of the day who wants what he wants, I should say that gets to decide what he wants, you know. And for me, I'm really happy with it. It's not a difficult thing to do, to make this whatever you want. It's a great building platform. If I just want the full size, the standard, you can get the six inch handguard with the barrel set for 70 pounds um, from VFC and that'll fit right on here. Um, no questions asked, it just goes on. The barrel screws on at the base of the block. So that's really cool and everything will fit. Obviously, you'd have to. The longer you make the barrel, you're gonna to have to extend the inner barrel and so on. Now, I myself have bought a 106 millimeter inner barrel from Crazy Jet or no, Maple Leafs, and yeah, it doubled my range. So now we're just swapping out the inner barrel, which is actually the easiest one I've ever done. It's even easier than doing a pistol. It's really simple. Um, took me literally about a minute and a half to do, um, and yeah. I swapped out the inner barrel, put the new one in. I've left the stock booking in there because it was fine. Once you break it in, it's fine because, yeah, speaking of the booking, that was the one thing that you saw the overhot with in, in long range with all the other reviewers out there from Asia. And they, like I say, theirs are all brand new. There's no wear marks. There's no scratching on their gun. And it looks like they've not even put any effort of doing it. They're just swapping out parts left, right, and center. And if that's what you want to do, you do that. But... Money being tight in this economy, I prefer to just do what it should be. And having had the Mark 18 do exactly the same thing, I decided to just give it the benefit of the doubt and just keep putting round, rounds through it. At 500 rounds, I could do burst fire. At 1,000 rounds, I could full auto mag dump this thing and it will shoot every BB in a straight line now. And the FPS just stabilizes. It's due, due to the booking. Because the booking in this is a pistol booking, let's put it that way, where they've cut that little extended ridge off it um, with an exacto and just fitted it on. That's their blue bookings. That's all they ever did. Um, they basically put that on there for convenience. It's also cheaper. It's easier to get hold of them because rifle bookings are a little bit more difficult at the moment. So using that, Save day, but you can put TNT booking in there if you wish. But um, it just means that that has a, a different shaped, I would say, nozzle hole at the end where your BB will go through. And because this has a rifle nozzle, that actually, and I don't want to sound kind of perverted, but it has to penetrate and go deeper in to create a seal. And if it's having to get meat resistance of that rubber holding it back, it's not going to get an exact seal, which means it won't cycle properly and therefore you start having issues. But if you semi auto it for a first 500 rounds and then go full auto in bursts for another 500 rounds and then do full mag dumps after that, you will find you'll have bedded it in, it wears in and everything's fine and it will shoot fine. I have that problem with a lot of gas blowback guns on the market. The Northeast has it as well with overhop or, you know, weird FPS inaccuracies, depending on the, the hot rubber manufacturer at the time and where that came out of. If it comes out of the first to get the stuff mold or the last it's going to have different amounts of material or flashes or how old new the mold is etc as the mold gets older more material leaks in just things like that and it's because that's a manufacturing issue and it's something that costs you what seven quid for a new booking away you go if you want to do it out the box or you could just put rounds through it and make it work you know as they say as the phrase says you do you 
But that's what I did, and now this thing shoots absolutely golden. It is a beautiful gun and works awesomely. This is now my number one primary, I would say, uh, for CQB. If you want a gun for CQB that kicks like a mule and absolutely owns the field, this is it. You get nothing better than this. So hopefully you guys understand this and appreciate this review, and hopefully you like this channel enough to give it a like, a comment, and subscribe for more awesome brand new stuff. This is still brand new on the market. It's very rare to find in Europe and the UK. There's not that many that I know of. So yeah, you know, if you wanna see more content like this, then subscribe to the channel because that allows me then to go out there and get you more and more awesome, cool stuff for you guys. So with that being said, I've been the Middle-Aged Gamer. You guys have been absolutely amazing and I will see you in the next one.